What's up, internet? My name is Megan. You can go follow me on Instagram at Adventures of the Meg. My Aussies I'm talking about today have their own Instagram called Adventures of Keaton Mosey. And today we are going to be talking about the, bless you, the five things I wish I knew before I got my Australian Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so let's begin. <laughs> The first thing that I wish I knew before I got keyed, my Red Merle Standard Australian Shepherd. Keyed. Kiki. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, whatever, let's get to it. The first thing that I wish I knew was that when they say Aussies are high energy dogs, Keith, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. When they say Aussies are high energy dogs, <laughs> I'm trying to make a video about you. What? All right, I kicked Keith out, I got my pillows back, but the first thing that I wish that I knew before I got an Australian Shepherd was the energy level. So you would hear if you did any kind of research that they are a high energy dog. And I'm 23, my boyfriend's 23. We are both very high energy people. We love to be outside. Uh, we love being active. We just figured this would be a perfect match. Like we're high energy people, they're a high energy breed. You are not ready for high energy if that is like your mindset. Like I wish someone would have said just because you're a high energy person doesn't mean that you might necessarily be a good fit for a high energy breed because when you think of your energy levels and you're like, yeah, I bike on the weekends and I do this, that, and the other, if you are not high energy every day, you don't understand what it is like to be a high energy dog because they need to be mentally or physically or both stimulated um, every day in order to burn off that energy. And if you neglect them of that interaction or that outlet to burn their energy, um, you could be faced with very destructive, bored like outcomes of just them needing some way to burn that fuel. So I think one of the biggest things that would frustrate us early on was just that we would take Keith outside and we would play a bunch and we thought we had done enough and we'd burned his energy and he would lay down for like an hour, hour and a half, and nap for a little bit. And then right after that nap, he was right back up, ready to go, like jumping on you, barking at you, really wanting to play. And in our eyes, we were like, we just did that. Oh my goodness. And it took us a while to learn that you have to not only take them outside and do the typical dog things, but what was really effective for Tyre and Keat out was training him. So I'm not sure the actual like, time conversion but it's something like for every 10 minutes you spend training it's like 30 minutes of physical activity to a dog or like 10 minutes of mental training 30 minutes of physical activity so we got smarter and we decided to start training him in shorter intervals throughout the day to just make it not as strenuous or all at once um, and we ended up actually paying for a training class or like a bundle of classes from a company called Sit Means Sit. And that's where we really learned how dogs really just need structure in their day and they want to be told what to do. So we learned how to put Keith on place, um, how to really challenge him. And at the end of those days when we were really focusing on training him, he was wiped out. So. If you have the time to dedicate to training your dog, to taking it outside and really making all of its needs, the physical and mental ones, um, the top of your priority for like 90% of the time, then I think an Aussie would be the right fit for you. But if you just don't have that kind of time in your life to 
dedicate to wear that energy down. Um, I think that you could potentially run into destructive behaviors or just not have a good relationship with your Aussie because they are a lot. The second thing that I wish I knew before I got my Australian Shepherd was that they are so vocal. And I think when I thought at first of vocal dogs, I would kind of think of like huskies and how they like woo woo or like howl at you sort of. Um, we haven't really had to struggle with howling with either of our Aussies, but more of just like barking for attention. Um, we're still trying to get a hold of that, but they are super vocal. Um, even if it's not barking to get your attention, if Key just feels like you haven't, like, I don't know, gone outside with him in a while, or it's been a minute since we've played, he'll like stretch and or, like groan or um, like make big sighs. He is such, he has such a sassy personality, but he will definitely let you know what he's thinking based off of his like tone of voice or just breathing habits. Um, I'd always grown up with smaller dogs and they always just kind of like barked at like normal dog things like the mailman or what have you um, and they never really barked at us for attention and so that was a big shift with owning these two Aussies. They're constantly um, making noise, trying to talk to us. Um, most of the time is cute, the other half of the time it's really annoying so we're trying to work on the quiet command. <laughs> Um, and it's definitely a work in progress. So I said that I grew up with smaller dogs and my Australian Shepherds were my first experience owning big dogs that also shed. So I didn't honestly know what to expect with Australian Shepherds. Like I just assumed um, it was probably gonna be like I feared the worst that like all my clothes would be covered. Um, it would be really unmanageable, but it actually ended up not being the case, thankfully. So, Keat is a year old. We got him in June of last year. So, the only time that he actually was, like, really bad shedding-wise was into, like, the very end of winter into spring. Uh, winter doesn't last very long. I live in Austin, Texas, so um, it didn't last as long as it would have in Michigan, which is where I grew up. But about when spring start, like the season started to change is when Keed really started to lose that winter coat. Um, we just bought one of those brushes that like gets the undercoat out. And so I would brush him a ton. Um, we would joke about all the different like animal shapes we could make with all of the hair that came out. But it was never so bad that I was like, ah, like I can't do this or it's all over. Like as long as you vacuum a decent amount um, and really try to manage it and work those like managing skills into your weekly or daily routine um, it wasn't that bad to handle so if shedding is something that you're worried about um, yeah really wasn't as bad as we thought the fourth thing that I wish I would have known before I got my Australian Shepherd is that their personalities can change over time and how you treat them has a big impact on how they will kind of turn out if you get them as a puppy and then raise them. So when we first got Keed, puppies in general, I guess, like aren't really that snuggly. Um, and Keed was absolutely not cuddly at all. Um, he was actually pretty mean when he was little. I, I'll try to find um, video clips and throw some in about just how he was like a menace. It wasn't fun at all. You are so <coughs> annoying. <coughs> You're not being nice to me. Why would I come play with you? <laughs> um, and we were worried, like, what if this is just his personality? What if he'll never want to cuddle with us? Like, we were hoping for a cuddly dog. And the more that we just kind of spent time loving on him and kissing him and holding him, um, he did eventually come around, which was really nice. So now he is a huge cuddle bug. He will jump on our bed and he loves, as you saw before, to just absolutely plow over our pillows, probably because they just smell like us. Um, and he lays on my pillow with me, like even last night, um, I face like facing this way. He'll come over and like put his head in my neck or like lay right on top of my head on the pillow and it is literally the cutest ever. Um, I would have never guessed that that would have been something that he like ended up doing when I got him as a puppy. So. If you're not loving your puppy's personality just yet, if you work on, if you want them to be cuddly or you want them to be um, like, I guess, different than they are, you can try to just positively reinforce your love with either like belly scratches or treats or whatever. 
Um, just because your puppy isn't very nice doesn't mean that they are a lost cause. And we're actually going through that right now with Mosey, who is almost five months old. He also isn't very cuddly, but I think he's learning from Key, just watching him interact with us. He'll come over and kind of like lay by your legs or like lean against you and that's about or like put his head on your legs. That's as cuddly as he gets, but we're working on it. So I'll keep you guys updated with how Mosey kind of matures through the next couple of months. The fifth and final thing that I wish I knew before I got my Aussie was just what it meant to own a Velcro dog. I guess I just assumed that it meant that like my dog would really love me and want to always be with me, but I never thought so far as to think that I would never be able to use the restroom alone again after owning <laughs> an Aussie. Um, but that is literally the case. Even showering, I'll see Keith's little nose like poke through our shower curtain and he's like, oh, what are you doing in there? I'm like, what's up? <laughs> It becomes a little extreme at times, but it's also really cute just to know that he's like that attached to us and he loves us that much. He has definitely taught me that I have a capacity to love more than I really ever knew. It's kind of like he's like my little baby, but I'm sure <laughs> that's... <laughs> I should, shouldn't compare it to like a human baby. It's completely different, but I've never had a human baby and I have had a puppy and just being able to end every day with him um, and start every day with him. It's been like a huge blessing with how crazy this past year has been. Uh, things would be a lot different if I didn't uh, get to do that with my dog. So I never thought I'd be someone who would say that. I never thought I'd be someone who would have two Australian Shepherds, but here I am, life is crazy. And I hope to keep being able to share my tips with you guys. It's definitely been a huge learning curve, like I said, but we have invested in some training. Um, we've learned a lot the hard way, so I would love for you if you just got an Aussie or maybe you're a owner as well, just trying to <laughs> see if we have things in common. Um, stick around, this definitely won't be my last video about my Aussies. So thank you so much for watching and go check out my Instagram. My handle is at Adventures of the Meg. If you want to follow Keed and Mosey on Instagram, theirs is Adventures of Keed and Mosey. Thank you so much. Go say hi to us on Instagram and I will see you in the next video.